Hey, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're going to be looking at drum roll. So the theme of this game is we're going to be running our own circus. Doesn't that sound awesome? Uh, it is a worker placement slash card manipulation game. Um, so it's pretty good. So this is going to be the setup and rules breakdown video. Click the link below for the playthrough and my review of the game. Uh, three things before we start. Like usual, please like, subscribe and comment on my YouTube channel. That would be fantastic. Let's get started. All right, let's start the setup by laying out our very colorful game board here in the middle of the table. Uh, next, we're going to set up our three decks that we're going to use throughout the game. So first, you're going to have your personnel deck. Uh, it's the one with the little dude hitting the spike. Uh, give it a good shuffle and you're going to flip over uh, the amount of cards equal to the number of players. So in a three player game, we'll flip over three cards. Okay. Next, we're going to look at the personnel deck. So again, give it a good shuffle, but you are going to have this uh, placement card to tell you that it's the performer deck. Uh, just as a general note, these cards are double sided. Uh, so this is the front side where it shows the cubes and this is the back side. So just a general hint, make sure they're all on their front side and then give it a good shuffle. After that, uh, you're going to display the amount of cards equal to the number of players plus one. So in a three player game, we're going to take four cards. Uh, you usually always take cards from this deck from the bottom so that you don't really see what cards are coming up. Okay, just some added rules for the display here for performers. Always make sure you never have more than two of the same performer type. If you ever do, just discard one of the cards and replace it with another card. So having two is fine, but more than two is not. Okay, the last deck is the investment deck here. You're not going to show any of the cards. Just leave a space for the discard pile. Now around the board, I like to keep all my stuff in a plano. So you're going to have your uh, performer cubes, you're going to have your money, your discount cubes, and so on and so on. Okay. Now for the more main board, there's just a couple of things we need to add. There's the neutral discs. One is going to keep track of the rounds and the other one for the shows. Okay. You're going to put one of each player's cubes on the point tracker over here on the zero space and one on the zero of the ticket track. That's it for the game board. Let's go to our main player board. So each player is going to get a player sheet here and it's going to tell them their color. You're going to look at the tent color. Okay. Um, each player is going to get three action discs. Okay. You're going to get one random city tile. Uh, this is just a way to score extra points. Uh, you're going to start with $15. Your money could be kept right over here. All right. And now you're going to hand each player two performers. Okay. They're going to look at them and they're going to select one and play it in front of them. This is going to be your starting performer and the other one is going to be passed to the player on the left. Now each player is going to do that and eventually you'll get one from the player to your right and he gave you this one and these are the two performers you're going to start with. Make sure they're both on their front side up so you can see their cubes. Okay. Two things you need to do afterwards. First, you're going to pay the cost of the initial value of your performer. So here they both cost uh, five and three. So that's eight. So I'm going to pay eight dollars. And next, you get to start with two performer cubes. So you could get to look at your guys and select two. So I might select yellow and green, for example. All right. And you're pretty much ready to go. Let's go to rules. All right, welcome to the rules breakdown for drum roll. So at its core, this is a worker placement game. So we're going to be using our action discs on the main board here to either gain cubes or money or any of the cards that you see around the table. All right, but there is a healthy dose of recipe fulfillment as well. Each of our performers requires specific cubes to unlock their special abilities to eventually do a three star performance so we can flip them over and score a ton of points. All right, um, let's talk about game length and sort of winning. Uh, so the game's going to last exactly three shows, not three rounds, three shows. And at the end of the third show, well, whoever has the most points, because this is a Euro, is going to win the game. <laughs> All right. But each show has a variable round count. Okay. So you're going to have between five and seven rounds per show. And I'm going to talk about that later in the video, but there's a sort of voting system halfway through where we're going to be deciding whether we want to have more rounds or not. All right, it's kind of funky. Um, there you go. But each round, you're going to follow the same round structure. Okay, so there's going to be four phases. So the first is a placement phase. Okay, so we're each going to be taking turns, starting with the first player and working around the table, placing a disc on the game board. All right, and when we've all run out of discs, uh, you're going to go to the second phase, which is the resolution phase. Okay, resolution phase is just what it sounds like. You're going to be resolving all the discs on the board in a specific order. And I'm going to go through all of those later in the video. 
All right, after that, there are some cleanup and other type of phases, but we're going to talk about that later. But let's just go through each of those phases. I'm going to go through all the rules. I'm going to each go through also the cards and what they sort of do and how to read a card and the different types of things that you'll encounter during the game. All right, let's just go. All right, the first phase every single round is the action slash placement phase. That's where we're going to be taking turns one at a time, starting with the first player, placing an action disc on the game board. And we're going to do that, looping around the table until everyone's played all their discs. All right, so there could be towers of discs all over the place. All right, just like I mentioned in the overview, you don't actually get the benefit for placing. You get all the benefits during phase two, which is the resolution phase. All right, there are some specific rules about placement. And it's a bit of a shame that they didn't write it on the game board. Uh, but there's some things that you need to take into consideration and remember as you play. All right. The first two spots I want to talk about are the uh, performers and personnel spots over here. All right. For these two spots, you, every player can at most send one disc to each of these sections. So as soon as you place a disc in the performer or personnel uh, section, you can't add a second disc to that area. Okay, and the way these work is you're going to create a tower and during the resolution phase I'll show you that the, you're going to draft the cards in the order of the tower. All right, that's how these two spots work. All right, the performer is for the performer cards and the personnel is for the personnel cards. All right, the next spot I want to talk about is the investment card spot right over here. For over here, you're going to make a tower as well. But this is a spot to end up drawing investment cards. And there's no blocking going on. So you can send more of your own discs in there and you're just going to create a massive tower. And there you go. All right. Just remember that when you have to resolve this, you're going to have to pay one for every card that you take. All right. There is a very important rule that you can never have more than two of your own discs in the spot. So you can't send all three. All right. It's more than two. So unless you want to send all three, that's the only way it's not possible. All right, the other spot that works exactly the same way is the ticket sales spot right over here. So for there, again, there is no blocking. You can send at most two of your discs every single round there. And during the resolution phase, this is a way to get money. And the last spots to talk about are the cube spots over here. So this is where the blocking happens so this is these are the only spots where there is blocking so as soon as somebody goes on a cube color nobody else can grab that cube color for the rest of the round all right so yellow would have to pick a different cube if they wanted a cube now there's a secondary rule as well that as soon as the amount of discs slash workers on the whole green section equal the amount of players so in a three player game it's three then that whole section is blocked off for all the players all right, so green wouldn't be able to come and get one of those cues because the whole section is blocked now that there are three discs in there. All right, and during resolution, I'll explain this is a way to just get cubes. All right, and cubes are useful because they go on your performers. And essentially, those are the only places that you can place cubes, right? So you're getting, uh, sorry, placing uh, your workers. So you're going to get cubes, you're going to move to get money, you're going to get investments, or you're going to get cards, uh, either personnel or performers. Now, it could happen, but it's rare that you don't have any place to place your disc. In that case is you put it back on your circus and you're just gonna get $1 from the general supply. Okay, let's go to the second phase. All right, the second phase is the resolution phase. That's where we're gonna be gaining all the benefits from all the discs that we placed on the main board here, okay? Now there's no turn structure in this phase. You're gonna follow a very strict order of operations to resolve the discs. Okay, so as soon as your disc is encountered and it's there, you're gonna resolve it. Okay, so the order is as follows. First, you're gonna resolve the cubes. Okay, so if your disc is there, you're gonna take back the disc into your general supply and you'll get the cubes on the spots that they were on. So for example, red here will get back their two discs and they will get a green and a red cube. So we'll take it from the general supply. And you'll place it on your player board in the indicated section here. Okay, uh, yellow will go get a blue cube and put it on their player board. All right, next is resolving the ticket sales. Okay, for every disc you have there, you're gonna move up once on the track, and you're gonna get the money that on the spots that you moved on to. So, for example, here, green has two discs, so they move up twice on this track, 
and they will gain five dollars because they were gain two and then three so you get five dollars from the general supply and add it to your player board all right then you can place your workers back on your player board as well all right next we're going to talk about the investment spot here let's just pretend we have multiple workers here for this spot here you're going to resolve the discs in uh, reverse order, starting with the disc at the bottom. And for every disc, you're going to pay a dollar to the general supply. For example, red's going to pay a dollar. And you're going to take the first card from the investment deck. Now, if the investment deck is ever finished, you're going to reshuffle the discard stack into a new draw deck and draw from that deck. So each of these are fairly unique. Uh, most of the time it is a play right away type of card if it is not like this one here it could be a card that gives you points at the end of the game or it could be a card that you can play at any point in a future round now each player does have a hand limit of two so as soon as you have two of these cards in your hand you can't really draw any more until you used one up okay then these would stay to your hand all right, and you just resolve these in turn order. So red grab the card, then yellow would pay a dollar and take a card, then green would uh, pay a dollar, take a card, and green would go again, take a dollar and take a card. All right, then you can return all those discs back to your player board. All right, next we're gonna resolve the performers. Okay, so again, just like in the uh, spot above here, you're gonna resolve these in reverse turn order, starting with the discs at the bottom, okay? So pretty simple, you're going to take back your disc, you're going to select the card that you want and you're going to pay for it. All right? The cost of a card is indicated in the top right, so that's his hiring cost. For example, the line wrestler here would cost $5, you'd turn in $5 to the general supply and you would add this card to your play area, for example like this. All right, and then the next player would go, same thing. He would take back his disc, he would pay, let's say he wanted this card, pay $4 to the general supply, and take the card. All right. If you don't have the money or you don't want any of the cards, you could actually pass and just take back your disc, but you don't get any bonus for doing so, you don't even make the extra dollar. All right. You just pass with the disc. All right. The exact same rules apply for the personnel afterwards. All right. You're going to resolve again from the bottom of the stack up, so for example, Let's just say it was like this. So yellow would go first. And the personnel work exactly the same way as the performers. So you're going to see a cost for the personnel on the top left here. So you pay that into the general supply. And you'd add this to your player board area. All right. Each of these just have a special power that you can enact anytime during the game. Just read the manual for their specific ability. All right. Once you take the card, It'll go on to the next player, red, you would take another card, and then green would take another card. Same rules apply. If you don't want any of the cards, or you don't have the money to pay for that card, well, you take back your disc and you don't get any benefit for doing so. All right, those are all the resolution steps that you really need to know. All right, phase three is the distribution phase, and this is a phase everyone's gonna do at the exact same time. So for this, we're gonna look at our player board, and what we're gonna do is you're gonna place between zero and two of the cubes from your personal supply onto your performers. Uh, you're free to do as you wish. You don't have to go in order, and if you see a multicolored cube, it can put either of the colors onto that spot. So for example, I could uh, place a yellow up here and a blue down here or I could have placed the yellow the first and the blue down here or whatever you like, all right? Um, just as a note, uh, it is always a good idea to cover up at least the first one, it'll help in the shows. And just some stuff to know about the anatomy of a card. Um, during his performance, he's only gonna activate one of the powers below. Usually the one on the right is more powerful. And to get to that one, you need to fill up all the cubes before it, all right? All right, I'm going to take a little bit of a break here to explain to you the anatomy of a card because it's fairly important. Um, so how do you read a card? So the top left is going to be the type of uh, performer it is. So remember, this deals with your locations. You might have specific bonuses. It can also deal with some investments and so on and so on. Uh, the top right is the price of the card. So once you initially purchase it, that's going to be the price. The little bag sign there with the hand, that's his cost every single round unless he does a three star performance so that's how much you're gonna have to pay him every round uh, 
uh, the point value here is when he finally gets flipped over, that's how many points he'll produce. So I'll just show you, it's three. That's the three that you see there. And below is his ability, all right? So uh, I'm going to talk about it later on in the video, but when you do a show, uh, you're going to either have a one-star, two-star, three-star performance, and essentially uh, up to where your cube has accumulated, you'll activate the power below it. So let's say you had two cubes on this character, you'll get four coins. If you had all three, then you'll get six coins. All right, and there's a bunch of different abilities you can have for your uh, performers. So this one is, deals with just deals with just money. Uh, this one is money as well. You have other ones that produce you cubes. So for example, this one, depending on how many cubes he had, you can get different types of cubes as a reward. This one is money for cubes. So here you have to pay. So by paying, the right arrow means you get and a cube of your choice or two cubes of your choice and so on. You'll take it from the general supply. All right, let's look at some special ones here. So when you see the uh, hand symbol with the negative two or the negative three, that means his cost. So normally he costs one times as many of these types of workers you have in your display. Well, you're gonna reduce his cost by that much or not pay for him at all. And then you have this one that you pay for trailers. I'm gonna talk about trailers in just one second. So this is a way to get trailers. And let's just talk about two more cards. Uh, all right, so when you see these white cards, these are investment cards, right? You can see the same symbol here. Essentially, this means, oh, this means draw an investment card. This one says, look at two investment cards and keep one. And this one says, look at three and keep one. All right, by flipping this guy over, over you also increase your hand size by one. So you're gonna have three, if you have just one of these guys, instead of just two. If you add two of these guys, then you'll increase your hand size by two, and so on and so on. So this guy's points and a hand uh, increase. And then there's this guy also, he deals with trailers, or you turn in a cube to not have to pay for him, or you straight up don't have to pay for him. All right, some of the stuff. Now let me circle back and just talk about trailers. Uh, trailers are pretty simple. Uh, whenever you gain a trailer, what you're gonna do is you're gonna assign it to one of your performers. And essentially his cost is reduced by one. So uh, remember what I said before that the cost of the character is here with the money bag symbol. By having a trailer on it, you're gonna reduce it by one. So for example, this one, let's say he was the only performer in my thing would be only one, but because he's in a trailer, it would cost zero. All right, they're also very useful because whenever you flip a performer over, the cost is almost always one. And the trailers always stick with that performer. So having a performer in a trailer is like paying for the worker for the rest of the game. Uh, you don't have to pay the one because he's in the trailer. All right, that's how trailers work. All right, the other type of card are the personnel cards. So let's just go through them. They're all special abilities, but I'll show you how to sort of read these cards to make it simpler. So whenever you see a right hand pointing, uh, this means during the distribution phase, you can sort of manipulate something. So here I can exchange a blue cube into a red and a white. Uh, this is just get four discount discs. Uh, this is from now on you can place three cubes during the distribution instead of just two uh, this is when you flip a performer over okay whenever you see one of these white uh, symbols it means during the collection or resolution phase uh, for example here is whenever you gain a blue cube you can get any cube you want not just blue um, this you can add another sign to your location uh, whenever you see the star it means after a show you gain the, one of the benefits on the right Again, here you just get $3 after every show. Uh, let's see, is there any other unique ones? Star, show, conversion. This one is uh, interesting. You can actually return him to the display of personnel to become the new first player. Um, yeah, that's how that works. Uh, the curtain here means at the end of the game, so there's a way to score extra points. And all the rest are kind of similar. Uh, just another one to, to talk about here is uh, this one here is whenever you get a performer there you go uh, instead of taking one of the ones in the display you can look at the next one and buy it at a cost of negative one instead of one of the ones in the display all right the fourth phase every single round is sort of like a reset phase okay but on the fifth and sixth round you're also going to do a vote i'm going to talk about the voting after explaining the reset all right, so for resetting, you're gonna do a couple of things. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of these discount chits and you're gonna add it to all the cards that were not purchased on the previous round, all right? 
These discount chits, just like their name indicates, are a negative one cost to the card for the following round. So for example, this uh, monkey here would cost two minus one, would only cost one coin. Now, if you add a chit to a card and it reduces the card's value to below zero, you're actually gonna just discard the card and replace it, okay? After dealing with the discount chits, pretty simple, you're gonna fill up the markets. So in a three player game, you'll have four performers and you're gonna have three personnel. All right, next, you're gonna take the first player marker, move it to the player to the left. And then you're just gonna move the round tracker down one. All right, and then you're gonna go to the next round. So you're gonna do phase one, which is placement, phase two, which is the resolution, phase three is the distribution, and phase four, which is the reset. And then you're gonna move this down again. All right, the first four rounds are gonna work exactly the same way. All right, and then you're gonna go to the fifth round. All right, for the fifth round, you're gonna do the first three phases as per usual. But on phase four, instead of doing the reset right away, you're gonna have a vote. And the players are voting whether they wanna go straight to the show or they wanna delay it to do another round. Okay, the show is just intermediate scoring. And then we're gonna sort of reset the round tracker. You're gonna have three shows throughout the game. All right, and how the voting works is players are secretly gonna either palm one of their action discs or show an empty hand. All right, so somebody, usually the first player is gonna say one, two, three, go. Everyone's gonna reveal their hand. And having a disc in your hand means you wanna delay the show, so you wanna have another round. But showing an empty hand means you wanna go to the show. All right, if there are more empty hands, then you don't have to move the round tracker down or do a reset phase. Uh, you just go straight to the show. But if there are more discs in people's hands, then you're gonna do the regular reset. So adding the discs, refilling the cards, moving the round tracker down one. All right, and there you go. You're gonna go do the next round. You're gonna do the same thing. All right, on a tie, I forgot to mention, <laughs> the tie is broken by whoever is the first player. So if you're playing a four player game or a two player game and the votes are two to two, whoever is holding the first player marker here is gonna break the tie. Now in a three player game, it's impossible to have a tie, so you can just forego that rule. All right. So if there's more votes on a delay, uh, you're gonna go to the sixth round. After the first three phases of round six, you're gonna do a vote again. This time though, it's gonna change just a little bit. All right, you're gonna vote again, but each player who voted to delay, whether the delay wins or not, is gonna lose a point. That's the negative one point here. Okay. So there you go. You're gonna decide whether you wanna delay or go to the show. If you go to the show, again, just like the fifth round, you don't have to reset anything because you're gonna go to the show and then uh, reset the round tracker after. But if you do delay, you're gonna go have this seventh round. After the seventh round, you have no choice. There's not gonna be a vote. You're gonna go straight to the show. All right, and finally, we're gonna talk about the show, which is just intermediate scoring that we're gonna end up doing three times during the game, like I had previously mentioned uh, in the video. Um, all right, so during this sort of phase, all the players can do this simultaneously if they're experienced with the game. If not, you can have one player watch another while they're scoring to make sure they're not making any mistakes, okay? Scoring your show is basically just activating all the performers you have in your circus uh, in the order that you want. So let's just use my tableau here as an example. And I have these performers. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do is you're only gonna activate the performers that have uh, not flipped over yet. So if you flipped over performers previously, uh, they don't activate again. Just put them on the side, they get ignored. All right, next you're gonna look at all the performers with cubes and you can activate them in any order. All right, so in this example here, uh, let's say I want to activate him. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is uh, if they have less than three cubes on them, so let's say like this, um, you can activate the ability up to their highest performance level. So let's say they only have one cube, you're going to activate the first ability here. If they have two cubes, you'll activate the second one. And if they have three, you can activate the third one. 
all right you have an extra option if you did fill up the performer uh, you can either activate their strongest ability or you can flip over the card like i did previously with this character here all right flipping over a card is a way to score because then they're going to score you victory points all right but you have to choose whether you want to flip it over or you want to get the ability all right you can't do both and you can do that for all the characters so i can do that for her so let's say i don't flip her over and i get five gold then i'll activate him and i'll get a coach so on and so on all right and then i can activate my other characters now any character that does not have any cubes at all on them whatsoever uh, you don't actually get the ability or flip it over they basically get fired and firing characters is really bad what's gonna happen is you're gonna discard the card uh, even if you discard it, you still have to pay them. So you're going to have to pay $4 and you're going to lose a point on the point track. All right. And then you discard the card. Now you're going to do the exact same thing for characters who don't have at least a one star performance. So even if this character has a cube, he can even have two cubes. But if you don't at least cover up their one star performance, they don't perform and they get fired as well. So you're going to discard the cube to the general supply. And you're going to discard the character. Again, you still have to pay them. And you're going to lose a point. So you're going to discard the card. And you're going to lose a point. Alright, after doing all that, you're going to pay for your characters again. Alright, so you're going to go through all your performers that you still have left. And your personnel. And you're going to pay for everyone. Now, very important, for every dollar that you can't pay for somebody... So let's say all of this would have cost me 10 gold, but I only have seven. You're going to lose one point for every gold that you don't have. So I'm going to discard my seven. I'm still missing three. So again, I'm going to lose three points. All right. Now all the players are going to do this. After paying the salaries, you're going to score one more thing. All right. If you had a perfect uh, performance, which means all your characters are on their flipped over side uh, you're gonna score two points okay the second thing you're gonna do is you're also gonna score your location let's look at the anatomy of this it's pretty simple to understand uh, these are uh, performer types if you have two of that type in your show you'll score two points and if you have two of the lower type in your show you'll also get two points Keep in mind there are some bonus cards like this that turn it from two to three but that's just a replacement of the score value here all right after scoring the show you're going to do a full reset okay uh it's almost like resetting the game <laughs> okay so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to reset the round tracker back to one next you're going to go to the next show after that you're going to reset everyone's ticket sales back to the original location Next, you're going to refill all the decks. So you're going to discard all the tokens, discard all the cards and refill. So again, in a three player game, you'll have four cards. Just as a friendly reminder, you can have more than two of the same card type in the uh, performer section. Again, for these cards, you can discard the tokens and remove the cards, put them in the discard and refresh. And the absolute last thing you're going to do is you're actually going to rotate your location to the player on the left and you'll get the location to the player on your right. All right. And there you go. You're going to go to the next round. You're going to do this again. Uh, so overall, you're going to do this whole thing three times and then you're going to go to final scoring. All right, so after you perform your third show, you're going to go straight to end game scoring. You're not going to play another round. All right, for end game scoring, very important, just follow this card that was provided in the game box uh, and just go through them in order. All right, so uh, first you're going to score the largest show. So the player with the most performers in their circus is going to get five points. Next, for each player that has one of each type of performer is going to get three points. Uh, next, if all your performers are flipped over on their three star side, you're gonna get five points. Uh, next, any player with more than 10 
performers in their circus is going to get four points. Uh, then each player with at least five personnel in their circus is going to get four points. And lastly, the player with the most personnel in their circus is going to get five points. You're going to calculate all of that on the point track. Whoever has the most points after that is going to win the game. <laughs> all right. So there's a full rule breakdown for drum roll. Uh, click on the link below if you want to see my review and the playthrough. If not, we'll definitely see you on the next one. All right. Later.